Thank you, Alex. Well, tis the season for love, but nowadays folks have more than just one way of finding the one. Ramey Cohen talked to two couples, one who met online and another who met the old fashioned way. On this Valentine's Day, we're showing you how these matches came into their making. For many folks, it's all about finding your soulmate, someone who makes you feel special. With today's technology, the way we can do that has evolved. I think it worked out for us, I think. Damon and Jennifer Woodson met on Match.com more than 20 years ago. At that time... It was not normal, and to put it in perspective, I would use the, you know, modem dial-up to get on Match.com. <laughs> My mom was just convinced that I was going to, you know, meet a serial killer. And Online dating wasn't popular yet, but... I think we were both looking for a long-term relationship. I was 27, 28 uh, when we got married, so, uh, I mean, we were both older. And as long as the profiles were you know, accurate, it, I think it can work for people. 20 years and three children later, the Woods and Steel feel the butterflies. I'm very happy. I'd give, you know, uh, Match.com a um, hundred, A plus. <laughs> I think it's a real good tool for people who are slightly introverted. While the Woodsons were typing out messages online, another couple's love story unfolded with handwritten letters. I have always had a love for the written word, and his letters needed no correction. Catherine and her husband, John Branch, met as teenagers in school. There was pretty much an immediate spark. But the couple admits the fire was close to burning out a few different points in their relationship. In high school, there was one time I broke up with him, and I was so mad, and I said, I will never marry John Branch. They got back together, but then had to navigate attending different colleges and eventually a military deployment. The couple says internet connection wasn't very reliable, so they often communicated through pen and paper. A lot of his letters were like multiple letters in one, and so these are ones that he wrote to me. But through each hardship, they found a way back to each other. There's a, a Rascal Flat song called God Bless the Broken Road. And we have kind of taken that as our theme song because it says, God bless the broken road that led me back to you. No matter how it happens, hearts can always find a way home. In Macon, Remy Cohen, 13 WMEZ News. Absolutely lovely story. I, I love that. It just makes my heart happy this morning. Okay, so you might be wondering, what is the best path to take when it comes to finding the one? online dating or an organic meeting. We took those questions to Tonja Simmons Lee. She's the executive director for counseling services at Central Georgia Technical College. There's some research out there and what they're saying is about 12 percent of the people that meet online are divorced or they divorce within the first three years. That of course means 88 percent of online relationships do last. On the flip side, she says about 3% of couples who meet the old fashioned way end up divorcing in the first three years. That means based on this research, you're more likely to last as a couple by skipping the apps and initially meeting face to face. If you choose to find your special someone by online dating, we have some dating safety tips for you. Use new photos that you haven't used elsewhere or online when making a profile on a dating app. This will make it harder for your connections to find you on social media. Avoid connecting with suspicious profiles if there's no bio or only one photo. It might be a catfish. Block and report suspicious profiles if something seems off. This is done anonymously. Remember that. Check out your potential date on social media. Look them up to see if you have any mutual friends or see if they're catfishing you. And most importantly, never share your personal information with someone you've never met in person. We also have tips if you plan on meeting up with your potential date. These are the things that you should remember. You want to make sure you video chat your match before you meet in person to be sure it's the person that you're trying to meet. Tell a friend or family where you're going, share your location, and send a picture of your date to someone close to you. Meet up in a public place on your first date. Never give out your home or workplace address just in case things don't go as you hope. Find your own transportation. Don't rely on your date so you can leave that situation if things get a little uncomfortable. And always trust your instincts. If things don't feel right, leave and go ahead and cut off that communication.